Hello? Hello? Hey, hey, Raggable, you're actually there. I'm sorry, I couldn't get a hold of you last time. But, uh, anyways, we gotta we gotta hurry up and uh, deliver on this PS1 conversion to PSP. So uh, if you can come on over. Yeah, yeah, I yeah <laughs> I can be there. Uh oh, and can you get a hold of Metrovar? I've been trying to call, but he's not answering his phone. Metrovar? Uh, I don't know. Hang on a second, let me check. Yeah, I don't know where I am. Well, anyways, just come on over and we'll, we'll just kick this yeah, episode yeah, out. I'll do that. I'm Fox. I'm Raggable. This is PSP Hacking 101, episode 23. Yes. Getting your PS1 games onto your PSP. And we're actually going to show up this time. Yes. Instead of mentioning it, we're delivering. This is the last episode on this volume of DVDs. Yes. All right. Done so. Uh, but first off, uh, the content from this show uh, is based on uh, a guide posted by Emmer. Emmer. Emmer, uh, 321. Yes. On our forums. forums. So we appreciate the post and the time that he took to actually go through and create that. It's so, uh, pretty much almost word for word. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I went down and slimmed it down for the show. But thank you for, such a, for contributing to our community. All right. Okay. Regable here. Going to give you a rundown on how to convert your PS1 games into an eBoot that will run on your PSP. And you can do this without having to buy them off your PS3. Just convert your existing games. Yes, you don't need a PS3. Woo! Rock on. Anyways, first thing you need to do is download the program for this called Auto Pop Station. Uh, the version that we're referencing is version four. Go ahead and download that, and it's a uh, compressed file that will have two folders in it. Core data, which will contain the software to actually create the eBoot from the ISO, and the software to actually rip your PS1 CD. The other folder called results is where the converted eBoot will be placed. So go ahead and extract those files and folders to somewhere on your hard drive, desktop, wherever have you. Then go ahead and put your PS1 game into your CD drive and open up the ISO producer.exe located in the core data folder. Go ahead and click on the configure plugin button to make sure that all the settings are set properly. The things you need to check for are the interface. Make sure it's set to W2K slash XP 10 CTL SCSI commands. Make sure your drive is set to the one that actually contains the PS1 game. Make sure your read mode is set to BE underscore 2 ATAPI. And make sure your subchannel reading is set to read subchannels. Because Back in the day, Sony was trying to protect their content. They didn't want people copying their discs, so they put extra information in the subchannels and little extra stuff so you couldn't copy them. Interestingly enough, they don't think they did that for their PSP UMD Yeah, games. they just figured you couldn't get that thing in your, your drive, <laughs> your CD-ROM drive or DVD drive. Yeah, we can't open that up. <laughs> Anyways, um, go ahead and save any changes you made to your settings, and then go ahead and save. Click Save ISO or whatever and save it to the same folder that you extracted the Auto Pop Station 4 program to. Now, if, you, if you're ripping a, a PAL version game... So if you a, live in Europe or a country with weird power... <laughs> <laughs> mo the most likely your original games will be in the PAL format. And it's, there's a conversion process, and there's a great guide on that on our yeah, forms. The, yes, so refer to that if you need to convert to NTSC. Anyways... Uh, after you have created your CD image, you now need to convert it to an eBoot. Go ahead and open the autopopstation4.bat file that is in the root of the folder that you extracted to. It will ask you for the name of the ISO that you just created. Type that in, and then it will ask you for the name of the game you're trying to convert. What it's trying to do here is it's searching through a list of database, or a, a list of games in its database of games. And so you can either type in the specific name of your game or just a short portion of your game name. 
Uh, for instance, on our Final Fantasy Tactics, we actually had to type in Tactics to get it. Final Fantasy Tactics didn't work. So, after you find your code, go ahead and note that down in either Notepad or with real pen and paper. Enter a capital Y and push Enter. It will now ask you for the compression level that you want to use. Uh, nine being the highest, one being the lowest. Uh, right now, this really doesn't do a whole lot, so you can it, it go ahead. It saves you a couple hundred megs. A couple hundred? Yeah, I take a 600 down to 400. Okay, so I would specify nine for the highest. Uh, after that, after you, after you specify that, it's gonna ask you how you want to generate your document.dat file. I'd go ahead and recommend using the default settings, so go ahead and enter D. But if you know what you're doing, go ahead and enter G and run through the wizard to create your own document.dat. Uh, after you've done that, you should go ahead and start converting it. And after a couple minutes, it'll be converted, and you can go ahead and look in the result folder and you will see a folder with your game name on it. What you need to do now is go ahead and copy that folder over to your game folder on your PSP's memory stick. Then go ahead and go into the game menu and you should see that game in your list of games. Woo! Tactics on the PSP. But it won't, it, it's a really weird title or it's a weird icon with a weird background. Well, you, there, there's more complicated ways of changing that, but we're not going to get into that in this episode. You could probably throw that eboot into PSP, PSP Brew and change it to something that is more recognizable to you. But just by default, if you're looking for an icon or a screenshot of your game, don't expect it. And as far as we know right now, uh, games that require more than one CD are a little bit difficult to get working. But there are ways, and it's on our forums. <laughs> yeah, they're not 100% either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for your Final Fantasies, yeah, that may not work. Anyways, uh, there is also a, another way to get more compression out of your image, which basically entails stripping out all the video and audio. <laughs> so I wouldn't call it so much compression as just stripping. Well, one of the one of the things they did with the PS One games is they said, oh, cool, we can put regular CD audio music tracks on there. So they can put uncompressed, you know, basically Wave. waves on there of like three or 400 megs. They, screw that. <laughs> Strip that out of there. <laughs> yeah, so if you can live without having sound or video, go ahead, give it a shot. There's more information on that on the guide as well. So have fun with your PS1 games, people. So hopefully following that, you should be able to get some PS1 games onto your PSP. Yay, 1990s Yay. video game technology. It was cooler finest. back when it was actually 1990. And you don't even have to turn your PSP upside down to have the games not skip. Didn't you ever do that? Was it PS1? The game, okay, the games, you never had a PS1. I never had okay. a PS1. You had a PS1, the first editions, the games would skip. And one of the ways of getting around that is you'd flip it upside down and it would work just fine. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Okay. Well, with the end of this episode, um, that will be the last episode that we need for DVD Volume 5. So uh, we should be getting that out sometime soon. soon. So yeah. for all the people who pre-ordered, should be, big, be expecting that sometime in the next month. Yeah, hopefully next week. Next week. I was giving you a lot okay. of leeway there okay. by saying month. Okay. Soon. Not, not tying to any promises like, oh, yeah. we'll say let's, we're going to so get a T82 anytime soon. So the DVDs are free. So you can make copy of, copies of them, give them to people, whatever. We, we just ask care. that you donate so that we can make you a copy and mm -hmm. send it to you. We're asking for a $10 donation for the DVDs, or there's some deals on packs if you want to get like all five of them. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some, getting to be some pretty big e, like, envelopes we're sending out with all five. I know! Five. I can have to like, get big boxes. I have to start sending them two. <laughs> There's a two now. Oh, they have the high definition versions of all the shows that you can audio commentary. Audio commentary. You can play and those bloopers. high definition ones on three on Xbox 360. Yeah, so you can copy them that. over. Always top that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you, you can. It's just cool. Who else is putting out podcasts in high definition that you can just watch on your Xbox? Well, how else are they going to watch them? We're not going to put out Blu-ray discs yet. Other than mine. That's donate fifty dollars. You get one of those. Sure, it can be done. <laughs> Okay, uh, back to the point. Outtakes, commentary, <laughs> bloopers, bloopers. Uh, yeah, outtakes. Uh, all the con all the all the, all the money that the proceeds are 
go to making the show, paying mm -hmm. for our hosting costs, the videotapes. God, the videotapes are expensive. Yes. Hard drive space. Okay. Anyways. Good luck, people. Yes. Have Subscribe fun. to the feed. Help on the forums. We're out. We're out. Oh, thanks to Kai <laughs> for helping out with the music and, and some yes. of the graphics this yes. episode. If you have any, if you do have anything you'd like to contribute, go ahead and email us. Uh, this be... is a user-created show. We're just front, fronting all this information out to people. So. so if you have anything to contribute, please come. And we're really out this time. This has been a Two Smart Guides production.